Hey everyone, one spitten here with another Warhammer Fantasy Battle Report. Uh, my Bretonians versus the Vampire Counts army. This is the third game in a row in which I used a, a very di different list than what I'm used to using. Um, mainly, there's no I have no spellcasters and no trebuchets in my list. And so it's going to be interesting going against this Vampire Counts army. Uh, the good news is he's relatively magic light, but they're, you know, they're Vampire Counts, and so they uh, they always have magic. So I was a little bit concerned about that. From my right to left, uh, this is what he has. Uh, there's a flying vampire on that corpse card, and I don't know if that was intentional or he may have just placed him there messing around. We'll uh, get a closer look at that later. Um, and what, what we've seen in these two slides is all he has in his list. And so it's a very interesting list. There's a lot of units that are really low points and really easy for me to kill. But then he's got a crypt ghoul horde with the... Um, regen banner which is very very intimidating and he's got a VC Lord and a zombie dragon which is very intimidating so um, really my plan is just to kill all the easy stuff and then figure out if there's a way I can team up on the on the difficult stuff to take it down so just some closer pictures here you see the vampire is the Batman figure <laughs> I love it um, yeah like I said I'm not sure he deployed on that thing or if he deployed where he's at now I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is his, his uh, battle standard bearer broke uh, one minute before we started playing. So he dropped him on the floor. Um, but that guy's tough. And really what I need to do is get him dead so that those crypt ghouls can be killed. Because, you know, their toughness four, two attacks each with poison. And then with a four-up regen just makes them brutal. So, um, anyway, so my basically I thought I would put my uh, heavy stuff on the left, so I've got my fast cav on the right with the archers. Um, you can barely see that small unit of knights errant with the character. I did put them over here to kind of babysit some of my infantry units. And then my heavy hitters, for the most part, are on the left. I do have the grail knights there, and three big blocks of knights over here. So Vanguard moves up, and we move to VC turn one. He moves up, not necessarily a whole lot to say there, um, I was surprised by his move on the far right with the Flying Vampire, who is easily within charge reach of my uh, Pegasus Knights, and yet not so close to the Spirit Host that I can't get in there. I can get in there easily enough, so I'm not sure what he was thinking there, um, and it may have just, just been kind of a blunder. I don't know. So, yeah, that's the intimidating one there. I'm kind of thinking if I can get my men at arms in there and maybe they can just hold out for a long time and, you know, maybe survive that way. Uh, the only thing of significance that happened in the magic phase is his 20 unit, his 20 man unit of zombies grew to a 35 man unit of zombies. So they went from being a very easy unit to take out to something a little more intimidating. He says that sometimes that unit, he's, he's had it up to 80. <laughs> Yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's take care of them quickly. Brett, turn one. So the first order of business is my Pegasus Knight's charging his vampire. Uh, I think that's easy points right there. I should take him out um, really without a problem. So uh, Otherwise, over here, I move up. Everybody was too far away for me to, uh, you know, for me to charge. I think my Knight's Errant had to take a leadership test and they were forced to charge, and they did a failed charge. So Knights Errant with the Errantry Banner are really a lot weaker now because they have to test on such a high distance away. So they, I'm getting a lot of failed charges on them first turn, so I might need to start shielding them with, with something. So same picture from before. And there's that combat. Let's get a side profile. It is Batman. And after combat, I did nothing to him. I totally whiffed all my attacks. He did one wound on me, so he had a wound, I had a charge, and then I had a musician, so I won by one. So he took a wound. So kind of an epic fail with the Pegasus Knights. But not the end of the world. So VC turn two, his big unit of zombies charges my Grill Relique, and otherwise he moves up, as you can see. The only big movement was his uh, general on the zombie going into those woods. This is the far left. So my guys are going to get a charge there. I'll take him out easily enough and just have to reform. So I'm not really concerned about the Knights Errant right now. His middle, his middle right. That's a Necromancer. I don't know if I listed that at the beginning of the game. Anyway, yeah, he's got a Necromancer there. 
And so at the end of combat, my Pegasus Knights were able to finally kill that vampire, which they should have done the first time around. Uh, really surprised here. Zombies, I've heard, you know, I know they're weak in combat, but these are peasants, and my peasants tore them up. I think I did 11 wounds on them between um, wounds and then combat res, and that's with him getting the charge. So uh, pretty impressed with the with the Grail Relique there. And we go to Brett turn two. So this is where we decide to start getting into it. Um, this is the far left. Like I said, my, my knight's errant. Got an easy charge into the fell bats, and I'm going to pop them. Uh, that's, that's an easy combat to win. Both these units of knights charge the skeletons in the woods. I'm learning not to worry about dangerous terrain tests. I lost two guys in this one, and even then, it's like, so what? It, you know, just take the charge. Just make the charge. Um, Questy knights failed the distance, but even without them, I, um, I think my units can do okay there. Men-at-arms get into the skeletons. I don't know if I'll get them this round or not, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think ultimately I'll win that battle. The uh, Pegasus Knights, having killed his uh, vampire, charge the corpse card in the woods. And I think I'm going to be able to take that out and then get into that Necromancer. So, uh, like I said, he's got a bunch of units that are easy for me to take out. So the big question is, am I going to be able to handle his big point sink, which is his uh, general and those, those uh, crypt ghouls. So... Um, Bring the small unit knights with the character into this unit because I just want them done and out of the way so that I can get my grill relique up to help out with uh, things in the middle, as well as those knights, of course. And that works. Zombies are awful. They were easy to kill. So now we're facing uh, his zombie. So, you know, at least I have a chance to do things there. And at the end of the combat, the Pegasus knights kind of fail again. They uh, did no wounds on the corpse cart. I don't remember if he did wounds back, but uh, I had the charge and the flank, so he must have done at least one wound on me. Anyway, he has one wound on the corpse cart. That's it. Yeah, pretty disappointed with the with the charging, the performance of my Pegasus Knights when charging this game so far. Uh, here on the left, my Knights of the Realm took care of that, that uh, skeleton unit. I didn't really think I'd take care of him just on one turn, but he didn't do any wounds on me. He did a bunch on him. And I was I could have overrun into the um, the corpse card, the second corpse card he has, but I I didn't we wouldn't fight it till his turn, and his zombies would have had an easy flank at, flank charge on me, and I think they just would have tore me up. So, in hindsight, I could have done it and just let him tear me up. I would likely get away from him, and then I'd get a flank charge with my questy knights, but um, I, I didn't like it. I figure if he charges me with the with the horde, I'll, I'll flee. And otherwise, I like where I'm positioned. Fell bats are dead. That was an easy one. 